Here in the oldest capital city in the Americas, a new era is about to dawn at the 2023 Hancock Mexico City E-Prix. We have new teams, new drivers, a brand new electric race car, but I can still guarantee the trademark action in the opening round of the ABB FIA Formula One World Championship. And we are here at the circuit Hermanos Rodriguez, a circuit that has hosted Formula E races since season two. Attack mode is in the Foro Sol Baseball Stadium where tens of thousands of fans will be watching on. Turn one will be one of the main overtaking points on the circuit. There's a new chicane at turns 9, 10 and 11, which again could provide an overtaking opportunity. But then the Foro Sol is where all of the fans are and the exit of turn 15 is where attack mode is placed for this afternoon's E3. My name is Jack Nichols. Alongside me in the commentary box is the former Avalanche Andretti driver, Oliver Askew, and this is the starting grid. Bird and Roland are on the back row. Robin Freitz making his first race for the app team in 19th place, just ahead of Norman Natto. Then it's Nico Muller in the other apt car, uh, behind Max Gunter in the Maserati MSG Racing. His teammate Eduardo Mortara is 16th on the grid. Rene Rast is appointed to only be 15th with his teammate a lot further up the order. A real shock. Reigning champion Stoffel van Dorn for DS Penske, 14th on the grid. Nick Cassidy is 12th, just behind the other DS Penske of jean eric Bird. The pre-season favourites, neither of them making it to the top 10. Antonio Felix da Costa's first race with Porsche, and he will start ninth on the grid ahead of Mitch Evans. Sasha Fenestras was superb in qualifying to go eighth on his debut in the Nissan. Pascal Verlein will line up sixth, and a career best qualifying for Dan Tictum, fifth on the grid for the Neo 333 team. Andre Losser is fourth for Avalanche Andretti after making a mistake in his qualifying semi final. Jake Hughes in his debut is third. Jake Dennis is second for Avalanche Andretti. And the pole sitter is the man who won the first ever Formula E race in Beijing in 2014, Lucas Degrassi. We are set to have 36 laps of racing. No more timed racing. It's all about the laps this afternoon. And as I say, Oliver Askew, the man who raced in the Mexico City E3 here last season, is alongside me in the commentary booth. There's the Foro Sol Baseball Stadium, absolutely packed. What's it like racing around there? So much energy, really. I can tell you. Uh, these electric cars are quiet, as we know, and um, it's a fantastic sensation as a driver to um, hear the chants from this crowd, not only in the stadium, but on the front straight as well before the lights go out here in a couple of moments. Here come the burnouts. We were looking forward to this as they move from the dummy grid to the main grid, trying to get some temperature in those rear tires. And these brand new Formula E cars for this season have so much power that they really burn out well. And I'm really interested to see what the starts are. 200, uh, well, 220 kilowatts off the line last year, 300 kilowatts off the line this year. And putting the power down has been something that the drivers have found really, really tricky. We're in position. New era of Formula E about to get underway. Brand new car, brand new season. Degrassi's on pole. All five lights are on. And we go green in Mexico City. It's a decent getaway from Degrassi. It's a very good start from Jake Hughes. Jake Hughes in the orange McLaren to the outside of turn one. Can't quite do it. Sasha Fenestrand is going full attack into the first corner, and he's got ahead of Sebastian Buemi. Everybody's safely through the first turn, with Degrassi leading in the Mahindra. Dennis is second in the Andretti. Third is Jake Hughes in the Lotterer, uh, ahead of Lotterer. Nick Tixum is fifth, Verline is sixth, Benestrad's ahead of Buemi, and up into seventh place. Now they fan out, coming down into the hairpin right-hander at turns five and six. Great side-by-side -side action through the middle of the pack, someone getting squeezed under the grass almost. I think that might be Buemi fighting with the Costa, potentially in the Porsche, it is, as they come into the chicane for the first time. Everybody neatly through there as well. Evans very, very close to a bit of contact uh, with jean eric Byrne. And he's having to work hard to defend his position. Freitz has dropped down to the back of the field, but Lucas de Grassi leading the way into the Foro Sol for the first time. Jake Dennis from second on the grid, Oliver, didn't get a great start, but he managed to hold his position. No, he was on the dirty side of the grid there. Not easy uh, to put the power down, especially with this extra power um, in this Gen 3 car. 100 kilowatts more power than Gen 2. We have to keep in mind, these tires are nowhere near up to temperature, so um, very uh, surprised to see a clean first lap here in Mexico City. Yeah, 
So, Degrassi leading the way across the line. At the end of the first lap, we've got 21 runners. Robin Freitz is out by the looks of things. The Dutchman is out of the E-Pre, having started towards the back of the grid, and the safety, safety car is deployed. Safety car deployed. That's Thomas Biermeyer, the boss of the app team. Safety car deployed on lap two of 36 because Robin Freitz is off the circuit. So we can calm down a little and regroup. It's the top 10 that score points. Fern uh, made up a couple of places, then lost a couple of places. There, Freitz is off at the chicane. So let's see what happened to him on the outside. Oh, he got oh. hit from behind, which sent him into the back of Natter. That was a very odd one indeed. I say that we were clean on the first lap. Yeah. We just didn't, didn't see that picture. Um, nothing he could have done there. So is it, is it Bird that's it gone into Bird. the back of it? An accordion effect there in, in the turn nine chicane. Everyone's stacking. So lap two of 63. Brian's still in the, in the car, but that's just procedural until he's told he can get out of the car. He has to remain in the car. And he'll have got the front Looked like he got quite a decent chunk of front left suspension damage there. Oh, and there's a bit of bodywork further around the circuit as well. So Degrassi is leading here. Dennis is second. Hughes is third. Lothra fourth. And fifth is Dan Tipton. They'll pick up the safety car at the exit of the, the first corner. Uh, statistically, the pole sitter is more likely to retire from this race than to win it. The pole sitter has retired three times in the Mexico City E3 in six races. The pole sitter has only won it twice. But Lucas de Grassi, whenever he's led a lap in Mexico City, he's crossed the line first. So things are he's got he's got mixed omens, Lucas de Grassi, up at the front now that he's behind the Porsche safety car. Brazilian fans will take the positive. Yeah. Uh, Lucas de Grassi has fantastic memories here. One of the most epic finishes in uh, Formula E history, passing. Pass me line. Let me know if uh, the race get extended one lap or not. So there's uh, last year we had added time. This year, depending on how long we're behind the safety car, laps can be added to the to the race distance. We'll find that out towards the towards the end of the pre. But that's why Degrassi's asking. Keep me updated if the if the if the race is going to be extended by a few laps because that will play into the team's energy management. Now here's a look at Sam Bird's view of this incident. Coming into the chicane now. That's Robin Freitz ahead. Oh, he, oh, he didn't get hit, Freitz. Oh, how strange. So that must have been a bit of a, a software problem or something. It looked as though I, I fully and unreservedly apologized to Sam Bird. But it felt from that onboard as though Freitz got hit. Yeah, maybe just didn't expect everyone to slow down so much through that corner. Well, again, apologies to Sam Bird. <laughs> and uh, those two former teammates for a couple of seasons at the Envision team. The full uh, the safety car deployed at the moment. Hopefully Bird's car will be removed before too long. Here's Bird's radio. Yeah, I was just trying to under-consume massively. So Bird just talking uh, to Phil Ingram on the radio. Uh, Norman Natto has come into the pits as well for some reason. Jake Hughes there in third place. That is the McLaren team. Zach Brown, the CEO at McLaren Racing here this weekend. Uh, Norman Natto is retiring in the Nissan. And uh, he was the one who got hit, wasn't he, by Freitz. So that will probably be why he's out of the race. And the McLaren man, Jake Hughes, in third place. And it's a new entry, McLaren. It's a new team, but they've basically brought out the all of the Mercedes EQ drivers. Uh, personnel from last season. So Ian James, the team principal, still there. The race engineers are all there as well. So there is Roger Griffiths, the Avalanche Andretti team principal, watching Dennis in second and Lotterer in fourth at the moment. And they're just keeping a bit of a gap to Lucas Degrassi while we are behind the safety guy here, Robin Freitz and Norman Natto, two retirements from the opening lap. That's Fred Bertrand, who's the new team principal at Mahindra Racing. So anyway, Jake Dennis is ready. Uh, safety car, man, it's pulling me slowing down quite a lot. So, uh, Dennis saying anyway to turn DMC off. 
what DMC stands I'm for? Not is sure. that new this year? I'm not sure. Uh, but it, sound, it sounds like it sounds like it's some kind of engine that's kind of pulling him forwards when he's trying to slow down. Yeah. Yeah, possibly some performance software um, in the car that he's trying to turn off now because he's going so slow behind the safety car. Efficient driving doesn't stop when the safety car comes out. Um, you're trying to carry as much momentum as possible. And uh, in your car at home, if you have a bunch of green lights uh, driving back from work, you're using a lot less fuel yeah. um, than, if, than you are if you were stopping. Here's a look at the start. You can see that uh, JQ has got to the outside there, but couldn't quite make the move. Fenestrat's got aggressive around the outside of Boemi, which was a lovely move to get up into seventh place. Or oh, Rene Rast, the, the, the second McLaren, so the orange car all the way back on the right-hand side. He got so close to, uh, to the wall with one of the Maserati MSG teams. Here they come. Watch this final McLaren here. They, went, they go three wide in and oh, just about managed to, uh, managed to make it through. Here's a look at the view on board from Stoffel van Dorn. Good getaway, got ahead of Cassidy, but Sete Camera covered the inside. And tried to get to the outside of Sete Camera, but decided against it. Safety car coming in this lap. Lap five of 36 in the opening race of the season in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. We're about to start lap six of 36 with Lucas de Grassi leading the way in the Mahindra, his first race with this new team, and he's backing the pack up now. When will he decide to floor the throttle? How alert will Jake Dennis be behind him? Will anyone be able to make a move down into the first corner? There goes Degrassi now, gets on the power. We're on board with Dennis as he tries to follow him. Green flag racing once more as we come out of the final corner and down the start finish straight. And Degrassi's got a pretty good restart here. Hughes is Fairly close to Jake Dennis coming down towards turn one, but not close enough to make a move. Not a big gap back uh, to Mitch Evans. Van Dorn is looking to the inside of Cassidy into the first corner, but everybody still settles back in their place. But uh, Lotta is looking the most racy, I would say, out of the top four at the moment. But then when is Lotta not looking racy? Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's in Andretti's best interest at the moment for Lotterer to, uh, to overtake the McLaren. Uh, just to give Jake a bit of a buffer here. Can relax a bit more, potentially save some energy and focus on the race in front of him. Drive shaft's gone, drive shaft's gone. Randomly, drive shaft's gone. Drive. That's Sam Bird. Drive shaft gone, so, so that is probably him. Oh, it is him out of the race. On inside of turn two. A mechanical failure. Nothing to do with software, I don't think. Sam Bird said to me on the grid, I don't think anything else can go wrong today because he's had such a horrible it's weekend. A horrible weekend. With, uh, with nothing of his own doing, all just mechanical and uh, electronical errors in the, uh, in the Jaguar. And that is another one. And the safety car is deployed again. So safety car deployed again. This has to cause some overtime now. Maybe some, yeah. some laps added to the end of the race. So... That's a real frustration for everybody, really. There is Bird pulled over at the side of the circuit on the inside of turn two. This should be quick. They can pull yeah. him backwards into the pit exit. We should be able to get going again. Degrassi with a, with a solid restart there. Yeah. Um, you can see it's... I thought we were going to hear a bit of Bird radio there. But uh, yeah, Degrassi with a very solid restart. As you say, so we are on lap seven of 36 behind the safety car in the first Formula E race of the season. It's uh, Bird said when it rains, it pours on the radio, and it's been a tough one for, uh, for Bird. Here's the Grassy's radio. This was, yeah, well, this was Bird pulling over at the, at the side of the circuit. Just on acceleration out of turn one, yeah. I think um, I think he just snapped the drive shaft there. Let's think we can hear it. Oh, Ooh. it let go on the exit of the final corner. That's very mechanical. Yes. You can hear the regen okay. there. Slowing down the car. Nope, that's not where you want to park. Bird out of the race. A really tough season last year for Sam Bird. 
James Barkley, the Jaguar TCS Racing team principal. Frustrated with that one. His other car, Mitch Evans, is in 10th place. How is it? Here's Dennis, who's running in second okay, place. Safety car restart. Upon restart, we will need to stay sharp regarding attack mode. So they'll need to stay sharp regarding attack mode. So this year, you get four minutes of attack mode. So instead of running at uh, 300 kilowatts, you get to run at 350 kilowatts for four minutes during the race. You have two intervals in which to do that. So you can either do two minutes, and then a bit later, another two minutes, or you can do one minute, and then a bit later, three minutes, or three minutes, and then a bit later, one minute. And that is entirely at the teams and drivers discretion basically and there's such an interesting element of <coughs> who will blink first in in attack mode and they've moved the attack mode activation zone as well to be on the outside of turn 15 so it's a different place you'll probably lose a place when you take attack mode as well so sandbird's car being recovered and we should be going racing again fairly soon, hopefully, as the safety car is deployed out there. But yeah, new attack mode strategy this season. And I'm fascinated to see how it pans out. What are you expecting? Yeah, you, you heard that radio message from Sean McGill, uh, Jake's engineer now for, for a couple of years at Andretti Autosport. Um, it's very situational. So uh, depending on, on what they decide pre-race, what the plan is going into the race, um, Jake may take attack with Degrassi. He may try to do the opposite and save it for later. Uh, but once you pre-select that strategy, whether you're going to take one minute and three minute, two and two, um, you're stuck with that strategy uh, from, from the first attack sequence. So it's going to be interesting to see, see here. It's the first, first time we've had this attack strategy in Formula yeah. E. Uh, Robin Freitz is out of the race, and it's worth, it's not the most exciting stat, but I'll give it to you anyway. Robin Freitz completed two full seasons without a retirement in Formula E, which is the first time that's ever been done. I think, I think, I don't know if anyone had ever done one before, but Robin Freitz has done two full years without a retirement. He has now had a retirement, hasn't started this one. Uh, the cars are going to go through the pit lane this time in order to avoid the recovery vehicle that's down the start-finish straight recovering Sam Bird's car. But that is a good sign because it means that uh, we should be going there could be a possibility the next lap. Safety car could be coming through the, yeah, the safety car is coming through the pit lane. Safety car is coming through the pit lane. It's official now. So, safety car running through the pit lane. How, what... What do you feel as a driver when the safety car comes out? Are you some? Does it depend? What are you sometimes like? Oh, that's a bit of a relief. I can have a rest. Or sometimes you're like, ah, oh, come on. If you're Lucas Degrassi, it depends how much of a lead you have, right? Yeah. So the safety car comes out. It's a different to virtual safety car. Safety car comes out, and um, whatever cushion you have to the car behind, that'll that'll be uh, completely absorbed. Um, so for for Jake Dennis here. It's a good sign. He's going to have another chance at Lucas Degrassi when they go green. Um, in a virtual safety car, you, you keep the gaps uh, around around other drivers. So the car's through the pit lane and uh, back out again. Here's Jake Dennis. OK, so we've got Pascal just behind Lotterer. He's managed to overtake Ticton. That can play out pretty well for us. How, how aware did you want to be of the, the sort of order behind you. Safety car will be coming in this lap, actually. So let's just have a quick look at, uh, uh, at how the energy is going at the moment. Lucas Degrassi has slightly less usable energy available than Dennis, Hughes, Lotterer and Verlein. But in the early stages, everyone's pretty even. Maybe set a camera a, a little bit less and tick them. But broadly speaking, we're all at about 86, 87%. So safety car in this lap we're about to get going again is Degrassi gonna do the same move or is he gonna wait a little later he looks quite close to the safety car this time it's gonna have to be in a different different spot he's gonna have to accelerate in a different spot look Jake. how spread out the back of the field is yeah. as well he's gone I think he's gone so at a bit oh no not yet now, now he, goes. he goes so Lucas Degrassi gets the race back underway coming through the peril tarder and down the start finish straight I tell you what Dennis and Hughes are quite close to the back of him 
just as they come out onto the front stretch, Degrassi builds the advantage a little bit. Down into the first corner again in these brand new Formula E cars for season nine. And they Everybody look fast at the end of the street. Yeah. Degrassi, Dennis, Hughes, Lotterer and Verline are the top five. Mahindra, Andretti, McLaren, Andretti and Porsche. Three Porsche-powered cars, actually, in the top five positions at the moment because Andretti are a Porsche customer team. But it's Lucas Degrassi leading the way for Mahindra as it stands. Two Mexico City wins under his belt before. One World Championship under his belt before from season three. Now we're on board with Jake Hughes in third in the Neon McLaren. This is his Formula E debut, and he's running in third place. Very good stuff from Hughes. Very impressive, and Lucas would have been told that he's 1% less energy than, than the two cars behind. That's definitely something that he's going to want to take care of. Now, Cassidy and Van Dorn have both activated their first attack mode. Cassidy doing it for one minute, and Van Dorn going for three minutes. So Cassidy is doing a one, then three, and uh, Van Dorn is doing a three, then one strategy. So that'll be interesting as they come down into the first corner. Van Dorn didn't make much progress off the start. There he is in the number one car, but here are the front three again. And Furline's very close to the, to the back of uh, the Lotterer car ahead of him, the two teammates from last year. You can see here on the left-hand side, everyone has four minutes of attack mode. Cassidy and Van Dorn, in their next attack mode, will have three and one minute left, respectively. This might, this attack sequence might trigger uh, drivers in front of Cassidy and Van Dorn to start going through those loops. Uh, they are now on the outside of the stadium section last year on the inside, so you do lose a bit of time, potentially a position or two. So you want to build that gap behind push before you take push the attack. attack. You need two tenths. And, and I don't, don't know if he did it there, Dennis. They said push for attack. I don't think he, he did by the looks of things. So um, it was a late call. He was already it was, there. Wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, the radio messages we play are delayed, but only by, I don't know, a few seconds. Like, it's not a, it's not a huge uh, delay on the radio messages. I don't so. think he took it, but it might be this lap. Here we go with Van Dorn. Uh, he is in attack mode and he's going to get Nick Cassidy here down into turn one. Looks to the inside, through he goes. And through goes Van Dorn and through to the lead goes Dennis. Jake Dennis takes the lead of the Mexico City E Prix. Degrassi down to second place. So, Dennis goes through. But here comes oh. Degrassi trying to get back. He's got good drive out of the corner. But now Jake Hughes is trying to take advantage of that. Coming down towards the chicane. Huge covers the inside. Lotterer goes towards the outside. But Jake Dennis has caught Degrassi napping there a little bit and lunged him at turn three kind of out of nowhere. Lap 12 of 36. Dennis in the lead. And look at the advantage he's built up over Degrassi already as they come back into the stadium section. Dennis leads, Degrassi second, Hughes in third. None of the top ten have taken attack mode yet. That radio transmission, uh, as we see Evans, as we see Evans go through attack there. The radio transmission to Jake earlier on might have been, might have meant go for the overtake. Yeah, potentially. And uh, also Dan Tickton has a drive-through penalty oh. for overpower. Such a shame for Dan Tickton. That that'll be a software glitch for the for the Neo team means that he's had a, a power spike at some point, used more than the 300 kilowatts he's allowed, and he is now serving a drive-through penalty. And, uh, oh, that was... Oh, Degrassi made a mistake. That's the replay in the bottom right. Okay. So that was Degrassi making a mistake, and that is what allowed Dennis to get through. He got wide coming out of the, uh, the first corner. He's pulled the gap now. Yeah. So Dennis leading. That's Degrassi in second place. Hughes in third. Lotterer in fourth position. That 13 of 36. Jake Dennis' radio. Use attack, use attack. And that is use attack because he has the margin to do it now. Jake Dennis up at the front, through he goes. So Dennis activates his first attack mode for one minute. So they're doing a, a one minute, then a three minute strategy uh, for Dennis. And he's the first driver really in the top 10, apart from DaCosta who's just activated it for two minutes to use his attack mode. So Dennis is now looking in a 
strong position. And he, Very strong. He said to you on the grid, didn't he? Main concern was Hughes and the and the McLaren powertrain or the Nissan powertrain in the back of the McLaren. So we'll see what happens with that. That 14 of 36. This is a fight for sixth place. Sasha Fenestras up ahead, Sebastian Buemi, as uh, they continue to squabble. Here's Degrassi. Try and go with Dennis. So, Verline is right behind Andre Lotterer here. These two teammates from last season, lap 14 of 36. Jake has to be careful here. Extra power means means more wheel spin. Wheel spin wheel spin means wasting energy. So very easy on the throttle. These tires don't overheat as easily as uh, as last year's. So thermal degradation not as much of an issue. So Berline in uh, fifth position activates his first attack mode. So he's going for two minutes and two minutes of attack mode. You can see the different strategies there. Fastest lap of the race from Jake Dennis. 1.1 seconds ahead of Degrassi that time. And then it's Hughes in third, Lotterer in fourth. Degrassi's dropping back a little, isn't he? Here's Dennis's radio. Okay, both cars, same energy. Both cars, same energy. Mode two now, mode two now. So when he's saying both cars, does he mean both Andretti's? The sister car would, yeah. be, would be same energy as him because that's information that they have back on the pit wall. Um, they don't know what other cars, what other car status of energy is until they put it on the on the broadcast. So lap 15 of 36, Jake Dennis pulling away. That is Oliver Askew, the former Andretti driver, alongside me in commentary. Jake Dennis, his teammate from last season. And go and take attack this lap. You'll be racing the line. Go and take attack this lap. You'll be racing the line. And Lotterer comes out behind Verline. So Lotterer activates one minute of attack mode. He's come out behind Pascal Verline, though, who's up into fourth place. Who's in attack be, as well? Who's in attack as well? So. And he's and he Verline did it for two minutes. So Lotter is not gonna. He's only gonna have about ten seconds of uh, extra attack mode compared to Verline. Hughes did it as well on this lap. So that's a one minute uh, run for Jake Hughes. Look at the energy remaining here as well. Degrassi's not in good shape energy wise. And coming into turn three, Buemi is still looking racy with the Costa, but isn't able to do it. Dennis leading. Degrassi is second. Third is Hughes, fourth is Verline, fifth is Lotterer. Then there's a gap back to Sasha Fenestras. They're in sixth position, just ahead of uh, De Costa in seventh. Buemi eighth, ninth is Evans, tenth is Jean Eric Verne. Gap at the front for Jake Dennis, 1.8 seconds now. And the Porsche powertrains all have very similar energy with an advantage over the rest at the moment. Avalanche Andretti running her to grass already. Take attack mode, take attack mode. So Degrassi in second place activates attack mode for one minute. So he's doing one minute, then three minutes, Lucas Degrassi. For the Mahindra team. And good attack sequence for him. He had the gap on Hughes and made it happen. So no loss of position. 17 of 36. Jake Dennis is leading 3.4 seconds ahead of Lucas Degrassi here. He's really building a lead. This continuing squabble between uh, Bohemi and Da Costa continues, but Da Costa holds the place. But it's this fight for second, third, fourth and fifth that is really the one to watch because Degrassi's the, the stopper in the bottle at the moment and he's, he's allowing Dennis to get away. There's Norman Natto out of the race after that contact with Robin Freintz on the opening lap, watching his teammate Sasha Fenestraus running in sixth position, but this is the fight, all over second place. Jake's driving away. Yeah. Really taking advantage uh, of that attack. And now he's 3.6 seconds ahead of uh, Degrassi. And just to give you uh, lap 17 of 36. And Jake Dennis's lead is 3.7 seconds here. Lucas Degrassi doing his best to hold everyone off for second position. board with Degrassi. 
running in second, looking back at the cars chasing him. And uh, comes across the line, loses another four tenths of a second. The gap for Dennis is almost up to four seconds now, up at the front. He's ramping away. And uh, romping away, what, yeah, and ramping up the gap, all of these things, as he uh, comes out down towards turns five and six. Edo Mortara is dropping down the tower on the left-hand side. He's in the barriers. Mortara for the Maserati MSG crew, out of the race, facing backwards in the wall. That's going to be a safety car. Could well be. Lap 18 of 36, the Maserati MSG crew had a difficult qualifying. James Rossett is their new team principal. They are the Venturi team from last year, just renamed as the Monaco Sports Group with a Maserati powertrain. Let's see what happened to Edo. Oh, he's by himself and just, just the rear. carries too much speed in. No contact. And some dirty air there from the car in front, just lost the rear at the apex. Maybe a bit too much rear locking. Lap 18 of 36, so the safety, safety car, car is deployed again. Not what Jake wanted to see. Yeah. No, that's true because he was, even if he was managing his energy well, which I'm sure he, which was, he was, you're still wasting that energy building a, building a gap up because you could have just sat in front of Degrassi and kept the same or kept more energy than before so that's uh that's an interesting part for for jake dennis as a driver at least he knows he has the pace so lap 19 of 36 safety car deployed here in mexico city opening race of the season eduardo mortara has crashed out of the race and is waiting to get recovered once the uh Safety car comes okay, out. Just be aware that the car might shut down. Be aware that the car might shut down. Oh. So Lotterer, I think, has a has a bit of a, a problem going on inside his Andretti, and uh, so the team are just making him aware of the of the problems. This is Mortara's fourth time in the last five races that he's failed to score points. The one race he didn't fail to score points, he won. Such a such a hit and miss last few races, I have to say. Uh, for Eduardo Mortara, he is okay, um, and uh, the car will be recovered as quickly as possible. So Andre may have a, an alarm that he's reported back to the pit wall. Maybe a, a software issue for that car. Now, just a, just an update on Robin Freitz here. We saw him involved in that accident at, at the start of the race. He's actually. Uh, broken his left wrist in that and will need to undergo an operation here in here in Mexico so sorry to hear that for for Robin Freitz and hopefully he can be back for for Diria but we'll wait and see uh, Sam Bird had a sort of similar incident last year and that put him out for Seoul there is Eduardo Mortara making his way back to Good the pit lane okay so we banked quite a bit there mode one is going to help us out with the restart to make the most of it uh, Dennis being given some information on the radio. That uh, Robin Freitz news coming from the from the team. So best wishes to to Robin. Uh, lap 20 of 36. Safety car going through the the pit lane. Uh, worth pointing out, we do have a an hour's time limit on this race as well. So it's uh, it's laps or one hour time limit, whichever expires first. And we'll of course keep you up to date with that as we as we go. Everybody going through the pit lane now because of the recovery to Eduardo Mortara down at the first corner. The Andretti team saying okay, that same level Andre does Hughes, have an Same issue. level as Hughes. Okay, 1% less than Pascal. 1% less. Then it's been given the updates on energy around him. And uh, there you can see the updates for yourself. Degrassi really working hard to try and keep that position, isn't he? Using uh, energy at the moment. But as I say, in the other Andretti, the team are trying to work through the, the problem. He does have an issue, but the team are trying to work through it, say, the Andretti squad. But their other car, Jake Dennis, is leading the way. It looked as though the uh, Mortara car was almost cleared as he ended up in the barriers. 
driving his new Maserati down a bit of a dead end street down there at turn one. Jake Dennis is leading the way. Degrassi second, Hughes third, Verline fourth, Lotterer fifth, Fenestras sixth. Safety car coming in this lap. So we'll be going racing once again. And we'll see what Dennis can do on this restart. He's got a good chunk of energy compared to Degrassi. And when's he going to go as well? And it's so difficult in the pack here. We are same energy than the line. 1% more than Hughes in front and 2% more than Degrassi in front as well. So over line, so on that's it. Lotter are getting told the uh, energy readouts there as well. There goes Dennis, floors the throttle, safety car comes in. We go racing once again in Mexico City. Green flag waved, and Dennis is the race leader for the Avalanche Andretti team. Lucas de Grassi is second for Mahindra. Jake Hughes is third in the McLaren. Fourth is Pascal Verlein. Fifth is Andre Lotterer. They're all a bit spread out coming down towards turn one this time. Swinging it through the right-hander. If anyone looks closest, I think it's Verlein. He's looking quite racy on the back of Jake Hughes through the left-hander. And Verlein has more energy than those ahead of him. So it's sort of not quite now or never for the winner of last year's E-Pri here, but now's the time to make a bit of progress. Because often the first sort of half of the Formula E race is, you know, consolidating your position and then playing with your energy in the second half of the race. This is when it starts to turn up. 15 laps to go now. Drivers are going to get much more aggressive. I do want to point out, Porsche was 1-2 last year and now um, have four cars, four powertrains in the top seven. So something with them in, in Mexico is clicking the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. And here they come through the Foro Sol and out of the stadium once more with Jake Dennis leading. There's the view back from Jake Hughes in third place, making his Formula E debut, the 28-year-old from Birmingham. Race winner in Formula 3, raced in Formula 2 as well. Never really with a sort of big hitter team. And he's been very, very impressive on his debut weekend here in Formula E. He was the Mercedes EQ development driver last season when they won the championship. Verline's really, really close here. How difficult is it to keep managing your targets and keep, you know, doing what you need to with the energy when you have someone trying to overtake you? Like very difficult and these drivers have an energy bar that's constantly moving through the lap um, and you want to get that towards the middle as you cross the finish line hitting your your energy targets but say you're defending from the car behind you're going to want to get that energy back in the tank um, at some point before the lap ends or else your your race strategy is going to get a bit slower we'll see dennis do attack here attack because he's so far ahead of everyone he doesn't but He's got such a big advantage, 1.2 seconds now for Dennis. All behind, all queued up behind Lucas Degrassi in second position in the Mahindra. Third is the Papaya Orange McLaren. Fourth is Pascal Verlein in the Porsche. Lotterer is fifth. Benestraus, De Costa, Buemi, Evans and Verne are the top ten at the moment. So out over the start, finish straight we go. Jake Dennis leading the way for Avalanche Andretti. That 23 of 36. Second is Degrassi. Third is... Hughes and fourth is Verlein and uh, Lotter is coming under big pressure from Sasha Fenestraus as well. I think Lotter is struggling a little with this. Uh, it's actually, I, I apologise. It was Fenestraus under pressure from De Costa, so it was the uh, it was sixth and seventh that is the very close fight. That 23 of 36. Big midfield fight there, as yeah. we see. Evans, Vern, Van Doren, Cassidy, all together. The points are up at the front. Dennis, we can expect him to take his next attack once he has built a sufficient gap to Degrassi in second. Here comes second, third, fourth, and fifth. Pascal Verlein running in fourth. Negative, negative. So that the was Berline obviously a bit earlier in the lap. The engineers out on the pit wall have a much broader picture of what's going on in the race. So, of course, the drivers can, can ask if they should take attack when they feel like they need to. But at the end of the day, the engineers on the pit wall know what's best. Always? Or sometimes you come out at the Most end of the of race the and you're like, 
guy. Come on, I knew that. I know last year you, we might have had some tire degradation and, and taking attack might, might be counterintuitive, not being able to use that extra power on acceleration, but with this new Hong Kong tire, that's not really a factor. Driver's eye here with Stoffel Van Dorn running in 11th place. The camera inside Van Dorn's as he comes into the stadium. He's right up behind his DS Penske teammate, uh, sorry, at the chicane. He's right behind his DS Penske. Oh my goodness. He's right behind his DS Penske teammate, Jean Eric Verne, as now he comes into the stadium section. And uh, those two right together and kind of biding their time a little bit. There's a, a bit of a gap back to Fenestraus in sixth position. So then Fenestraus to Costa Buemi, Evans, Vern, Van Dorn is all a bit of a cue. Seven tenths of a second, the gap between Degrassi and Hughes. This is the look back from Hughes to Verline behind him as they come out across the line down towards turn one. We'd normally see a big fight for the final points paying position in, in P10, but obviously both those, those teammates running 10th and 11th playing nicely so far. Then it's his lead up to two seconds. He's in such control of this race, Jeff Dennis. I'm so I'm not surprised by him or the team, but oy, mistake there from uh, Lotterer. Went very, very deep into five and six, uh, which is what he did in qualifying and does the same here. So he falls a little bit away from the back of Verline. So second, third, fourth, coming through the chicane. Degrassi, Hughes, Verline. Then a little gap to Lotterer behind. Evans has got ahead of uh, Antonio Felix de Costa and up into eighth position. On lap 25 of 36. Now, through attack mode there goes Verline and Lotterer. So Verline and Lotterer both activating their second attack modes here. Go attack, Shadow Verline is going attack, go attack, go attack. So Lotterer being told to go into attack mode because Verline is. So that was a sort of defensive move really from, uh, well, a, 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 an aggressive move from Lotterer because they know they have more attack mode than Verline. More so attack remaining. More yeah. attack mode remaining. So now they will have an extra minute, which is almost an extra lap in attack mode to try and overtake Andre Lotterer, uh, to try and overtake Pascal Verlaine for fourth place. Degrassi being told to push for attack this lap around. He's got enough of a gap at the moment on Jake Hughes and they battle over second place. Back down towards the stadium once more. Degrassi in that gold and red Mahindra running up in second place, Jake Hughes is right behind him. We're expecting Degrassi to go through attack mode here, and Hughes follows him through. And Verline does it, and Verline slots through, gets ahead of Jake Hughes. Now, Hughes will have more attack mode than Pascal Verline remaining. Look, you can see on the tower, Hughes will have an extra 50 kilowatts for another couple of minutes, to be honest, but Verline has managed to get through. Last year's winner, yeah. making a late charge, multiple podium finisher here in Mexico City. So making a bit of progress now. Uh, Mitch Evans hasn't used his attack mode at all yet. You can see on the tower on the left, he's still got four minutes remaining, Evans, so he needs to crack on with it. This Getting is what happened with Verline when those two took attack mode. Verline was able to just wriggle through the middle. There might even have been a bit of contact with the back of Degrassi here. There, just maybe a little nudge, but Degrassi managed to hold the place. So, Degrassi second, Verline third, but now Verline in third is out of attack mode. Hughes in the McLaren has attack mode and he'll want to get back through into third place. But this will be frustrating for Hughes because he's dropped back a little now from Degrassi, the man he was fighting. Getting information here that, that Evans actually missed attack as we see Dennis going through, taking his final attack loops. Still a massive lead and complete control over Lucas Degrassi. You can see the gap there. I mean, you, you were in the team last year as Jake Dennis's teammate when he had these dominant weekends, like in London and stuff like that. And when he gets a lead like this, it's kind of unstoppable. You get that confidence as a driver. Yeah. You feel unbeatable. And it, it, it turns into performance on track. Yeah. Like 28 of 36. 
and Jake Dennis is leading the way here in Mexico City opening race of the season his lead is huge over Lucas Degrassi in second place there he goes now here's Degrassi Verline and Hughes all fighting over that second spot Degrassi and Verline finished side by side back in season five after Verline led the whole race and then Degrassi nipped him right at the line when Verline ran out of energy when Verline was racing for the Mahindra team all sorts of story threads intertwining in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship Verline's made three places over the course of this race he's having a strong race and Hughes only has 30 seconds of attack mode left compared to Verline so down this front straight or the advantage is gone and he doesn't look close enough at the moment no Pascal definitely on the offensive here probably not looking in his mirrors too much quite different lines through the final corner there yeah just looking for a little bit of clean air we also remember in qualifying he almost lost the rear of the car look how much less energy Degrassi has he's not in good shape he's I got two or three percent that's a lap I can tell you that is not that is not a good sight for the Mahindra team and that's going to be relayed to him immediately Jake Dennis is leading the way and I think yeah, Pascal's going by here shortly yeah that message has been relayed and Degrassi knows he's going to have to drive an exceptionally wide Formula E car if he wants to hold on to a podium position here Dan kicks him he's to remember he to go oh and here comes Verline yep clean move into Textbook. the chicane Degrassi and knew he was coming and now Jake Hughes is going to try and take advantage of this as well Florian Modlinger with a little round of applause in the garage the Porsche up into second place it's a Porsche powertrain 1-2 right now Verline 1% more than us Degrassi 2% less and that is Hughes being told Degrassi's got less energy. It's time to get him, son, by uh, Alan Cox, his race engineer. We'll see if he does it this time, coming down the start finish straight on board with the British driver. Foxtrot urgent, Foxtrot urgent. Under the brakes into turn one. I say under the brakes. Onto on, the brake pedal on regen, uh, and I think that Foxtrot urgent means you've got to get past this guy. Same, uh, same cryptic message that they use as Mercedes last year. Yeah, covers the inside here. Degrassi, thing is for Degrassi, how much does he fight? Because the more he fights, the more he loses energy, but he's already kind of out of the energy game already, so. Might as well just get your elbows out and give it a go. There's a bit of psychology behind it as well, because he knows that he's one of the most experienced drivers going against a rookie. Yeah. And Jake understands it as well. Jake Hughes, that is. 30 of 36. There's the energy remaining. Degrassi's pull. Oh, I mean, he's still 3% less. It's still looking tough for him. Dennis and Verline looking very, very strong out front now Dennis has built his lead up to in four seconds again the man's are fast sometimes he's just disappearing up the road time and time again today uh, the DS Penske's have got to be the ninth and 11th so Vern is into the points uh, maybe they could come through at the end and get a few places the grassy running in third uh, sock is minus two on the top six that's not the radio message you want to hear no, and 2% might sound like a little bit, but in Formula E, that's yeah. that's a huge pace disadvantage that that Lucas Degrassi has. Yeah, I mean, 3% three, three is usually about a lap, so we are we're talking that level of, of difference here, and Hughes really needs to try and get past Degrassi as soon as possible. Well, although, on, I mean, if he gets past the grassy, can he chase in on Verline? I don't know, because the gap there is up to one and a half seconds. Here's a look at uh, Verline's move on the grassy. Down towards the chicane. Came from quite far back, but got the job done. Through the final corner, lap 32 of 36. Jake Dennis is lead, okay, 4.2 seconds. Same energy to the leader, same energy to the leader. You've got 2% more than the car behind. So just focus on efficiency, mate. Now here's some fighting further back. 
for Costa is uh, just oh. ahead of Fenestraz. Evans moving on the brakes there. I mean, his, his, the rear of his car was not very stable. There's Scott Elkins. Sure. That 32 of 36. Jake Dennis is leading the way. Here he is in the Andretti. Maybe sounds like a bit of debris on track somewhere. Yeah. Four point three second lead up at the front for for Jake Dennis. Here, yeah. which is uh, absolutely huge, especially considering he's built up that lead once and then built it up again. And he was saying to you on the grid, was not expecting to be racing up at the front this weekend was it i think he's being modest once that helmet goes on and the visor drops you, Do you you've, think? you've got to feel like the man yeah, you know but, uh, yeah but after valencia i don't think you think porsche or andretti came into this weekend thinking we're going to be front runners you know i know dennis believes in himself there's there's no doubt about that in almost every sense especially fashion but i think that the teams weren't expecting to be fighting for poles and wins necessarily, were they? No, but with, with this new car the, the, and the new regulations, the, uh, the developments, it's a development race, it's happening so fast. And uh, these cars are nowhere near running at their, uh, at their full potential, at least not yet, as uh, a couple races and, uh, and some more track time gets under these drivers' belts. Gap to Pascal 4.5 is growing. A nice message to hear. Yeah, I bet. I bet. There you can see the, the gaps on the left hand side. And still, Degrassi is holding on here and uh, swinging through the left handers of the stadium section. Dennis disappearing out in front still. Now, as a driver, you know you have the advantage. You know you have the gap to the car behind leading the race, listening to. Any any bump or a potential problem in the car, it's it's hard not to notice those things. Five added laps. We've got five added laps because of the time spent behind safety car. So we now uh, will have eight laps to go in this Mexico City E Prix, and that is not good news either for Lucas Degrassi. Although his energy percentage is coming back, he's only minus two percent now, 2.2, 2.3, which is still not great but not a disaster. You can oh. see the reason you see it moving, oh, Degrassi goes in super deep into turns five and six. That'll give him a bit more regen, I guess. The longer he's on the brakes, but he's really working hard to try and keep this place. The reason you see the percentage going up and down and increasing and decreasing is because they're regenerating energy at different points on the, on the circuit. So that's why you see such a fluctuation. Here's Jake Hughes's radio. Continue to increase charge where possible. So continue to regenerate energy where possible, basically, for Jake Hughes. Degrassi's kind of getting it bad under control. Is Degrassi finishing on the podium? I think with his experience, yes. You reckon he can do it? And it looks like right now that he's fast in all the right places. As a driver trying to put energy back into the car compared to your competitors, you're going to be slower and in areas of the track where he knows the drivers behind can't overtake. So he's very smart at the moment. Lotterer looks like he's getting a bit lotterery in uh, fifth position. Oh, Jake's close now, he's gonna go. Oh, Hughes tried to kind of get the cutback coming into turn five, yeah. but Degrassi saw it coming and here comes Lotterer. Jake Hughes is about to have his first experience of the German man. Here they come, down towards the chicane. Just and he's, there's gonna be... We look back up at top five again. And that's Lotterer's engineer calling it exactly that uh, Degrassi will back everyone up at turn five. And that's exactly what he did because he can defend there because of that kink. And that kind of leaves him safe for the chicane later on. And he's lifting early, so he's not deploying as much energy as the cars behind trying to overtake. Just trying to get that battery percentage a bit closer to his competitors. So we're on lap 36 of 36, but there's five added laps. So we've got six laps to go still as we come out of the final corner and across the line. Jake Dennis's lead is now five seconds. And then Verline is four seconds ahead of Degrassi. Degrassi is just 
this is, if De Grassi finishes on the podium here, it might be one of his great drives. He's had a lot of good drives in Formula E, but this would be quite a day for De Grassi if he's able to hold on to the podium. Oh, so close in this fight for third, fourth, and fifth here. De Grassi, Hughes, and Lotterer for the final podium position. Through the chicane. Foxtrot urgent, Foxtrot urgent. And Hughes, that's at least the second time he's been told Foxtrot urgent, which means you've got to overtake this dude. But he hasn't been able to yet. Also, keep an eye on Stoffel van Dorn uh, and jean eric Verne in ninth and 11th. They've both got a bit more energy than those around him, and they've both got an attack mode remaining with five laps uh, left at the end of this one. So just keep a little eye on them. We're into the five added laps now. Through the final corner, out across the line. Dennis leading. And we're on lap one of five of the added laps. And Hughes is having to defend a little here. All of this is bringing Buemi into the fight. 1.5% more energy than Degrassi. Hughes again being told, look, you've got more energy than Degrassi. But look at Buemi in the green and vision at the back of the queue here. It's a four-way fight for third. Yeah. This is the race on the track right now. Degrassi defending again. Boemi returning to the front of the grid after a struggle last year. Yeah, he can the Envision team. Oh, Degrassi's gone in really deep, really deep into the chicane there, and he's going to be under an awful lot of pressure. Does he cover coming down into the stadium? He doesn't. So Degrassi is still fighting the fight and holding on, and he's wide, he's wide, he's wide. Is that the chance for Hughes? No. Degrassi is just, this is remarkable stuff. But he doesn't look like he's got any grip left, let alone any energy. Textbook defending. Yeah. It's really good to watch this from Degrassi here. A lot of fun. Vern activates his final attack mode, so we'll keep an eye on him. But this fight for the final podium spot is absolutely superb. Across the line we go again. Degrassi, Hughes, Lotterer, and Buemi. There's, he didn't go in deep into the chicane on purpose. Did he to like sort of, I don't know, slow everyone else down a little? That doesn't seem like a, a, a tactic that's real. No, and as we see here, going back into the sector of the track we're overtaking is an opportunity. So there's, the, oh, a bit of contact there as well with the Andrettis. And uh, well, there comes uh, Mitch Evans. He's coming to the inside here of Sasha Fenestras and gets through no front wing for Vern. So Vern's had a collision out there somewhere. He's got no front wing. He's gone heavily into the back of someone. I think Van Dorn's got damage as well. Yeah, there's Both a yellow flag CS somewhere. The Penske's have, uh, have got damage on the, on the front of their cars. But here we go, back to Degrassi in third place. It's all coming together now in the final few laps of the Mexico City E Prix. Degrassi holding on to third, Hughes, Lotterer and Buemi behind. And maybe there was contact there with Buemi and uh, Lotterer because Buemi, Buemi has hit the back of Lotterer at some point too. So it's all kicking off. Across the line comes Dennis, three laps to go. There's the energy and still Degrassi and Hughes are right together. Yellow's T7 now, yellow's T7 now. You're smashing this mate, there's one more lap down. Keep it up. So yellow flags hit, oh, there's a car on the left, it's Rast. So it's Rene Rast, is off the circuit, he's in a safe location. So uh, hopefully the race will continue. Back we go again. Well, now he doesn't have to defend, you can't overtake under yellow. Uh, Roland and Rast collided, apparently. So that's what happened there. So, but oh, is it here clear? he comes! It's clear for 11, oh! Whoa. There's still a yellow. Yeah, that's you the problem. You can't overtake. It's because of that debris. There's debris in turn nine. So yellow at turn seven and at turn eight. So that takes out that overtaking opportunity. And Rast didn't realize, and uh, sorry, Hughes didn't realize and was sort of on the full send before he realized. Two laps to go at the end of this one. Look at this queue for third place, which Antonio Felix da Costa has now joined. Absolutely remarkable. On board with Buemi, who's at the back of this queue in sixth position. And Degrassi's got a bit of a gap to Jake Hughes now as well as they come around the final corner to start the penultimate lap of the E-Prix. 
Degrassi's gap is eight tenths of a second. That might be enough for two more laps. He's suddenly not defending from Jake Hughes quite as aggressively. And Lotter is still nosing to the inside. Two laps left, half a percent to Hughes. He's done a remarkable job here, Lucas Degrassi. Absolutely remarkable. Still two laps to go. Make that a lap and a half. Still a yellow. We'll see if the debris is cleared. Yeah, it might just be... Oh, a look from Buemi. But again, that's into the... Oh, I don't think... Uh, I think the debris is still there. So I think the yellow flag is still there at, uh, at turn eight. But look at Lotter now. He's going to get impatient. Running in fifth place. No, and not into the stadium section. Wow. Thought about it. On board with the Avalanche Andretti driver, running in fifth place. His teammate is disappearing up the road. Jake Dennis leading as he starts the final lap of the Mexico City E Prix. He's seven and a half seconds ahead of Pascal Berline in second place. And now is the battle for third coming into view. Lucas Degrassi. He's got a good advantage over Hughes. Yeah, it's with the race one for fourth now. Hughes defending into turn one. Degrassi. Radio. Same no energy as the grassy. No risk. Whoa, Lotter forces it around the outside. Hughes holds the inside line coming into turn three. And how much pressure is Lotter under from Buemi? A bit, but he manages to keep it together. How racy is De Costa? De Costa goes to the outside at the back of the queue in the Porsche. There's a bit of contact between uh, Lotter and Hughes ahead of him. Fenestraz has now dropped out of the points and down into oh, the place. And there's the move. That's it's a slippery, I think it's a slippery surface flag now. I don't think it's a yellow anymore there at the chicane. So that seems like a legitimate move for Lotterer. He's got him into fourth place. Hughes drops down to fifth, but the other Avalanche Andretti is coming through the final corner. And Jake Dennis starts Gen 3 of Formula E with a superb dominant win in Mexico City. Jake Dennis wins and is the first winner of the season. The first winner of season nine. Pascal Verlein across the line in second place after winning here last year. Third is going to be Degrassi. He comes out the final corner now what and takes the checkered flag. Oh my God. Disbelief from Jake Dennis over the line. Super impressive. Completely dominated. We've got more action. There's a DS Penske going slowly oh, out of the final of corner. He's out of energy as he comes across the line. It's Fern. Jean-Eric Byrne out of energy as he comes through. And he ends up finishing in 12th place. Only one point for DS Penske. But it's Jake Dennis who wins for Andretti. Fantastic, fantastic, Jake. Well done, super race. Complete domination, well done. What a start to the season. Remarkable performance from Jake Dennis. We'll try and have a word with him now, Jake, it's Jack, you're live on TV. What a dominant race that was, easy. Well, I think he's too busy celebrating to, uh, to speak to us there. Uh, Jake, it's Jack here, congratulations. What a, what a dominant win that was. too emotional yeah too emotional to talk to me understandably so but uh, Dennis pulls up in the Foro Sol that is now uh, four podiums in the last five races for Jake Dennis and I'm not gonna lie Oliver Askew on the Formula E show post FP1 we gave our predictions you said I predict Jake Dennis for the win and I thought you were just being a bit stupid. I, I thought you were being like... Insider information. I thought you were just being like, oh, you know, former teammate, just saying it to be kind. It was true. It was true. My pick scored one point. Stoffel van Dorn. And Degrassi, that is... Today has been... Today's been one of the best drives of Degrassi's career, in my opinion like including qualifying, qualifying up the hinder on pole and racing it to third was a joke of a drive from Degrassi. Unbelievable. And Verline's on the podium again for the second place finish.
Great. Go on, Jake. <laughs> Enjoy this. Jake Dennis, the winner of the Mexico City e -Prix. Dennis, guess what? Set the fastest lap of the race as well. Fastest lap bonus. He becomes the 16th driver to lead the Formula E World Championship. First time he has led it. And Andretti win the first race in Gen 3 in the same way they so won the first tequila. race in Gen 2. Time to get some tequila. After his first race win, Jake Dennis, he said, uh, he came on the radio and he said, oh, we're having some beers tonight, lads. It was only two races later I found out he doesn't like beer, but he didn't want to come on the radio and say, time for some vodka cokes tonight, lads, <laughs> because he thought he'd sound like a bit of an idiot. Right. But uh, tequila's a fair enough one. Are you out with Dennis tonight? You might P have to be now. Potentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's going to be a big one. Lucas Degrassi, 10 out of 10 today. What a drive. Absolutely. I'm putting that, I'm putting that my, my top Lucas Degrassi drive. Yes. Uh, a drive that including has qualifying. to be noted. Uh, definitely a, t a contender for drive of the day. Difficult to take it away from that man, though, to be fair. Yeah, for sure. And Pascal Verlein, good job in the Porsche. Kind of quietly crept through the order and up the field. Two uh, Porsche powertrains, as, as we spoke about. Yeah. Uh, performing very well so here there in Mexico. The, there were the point scorers on the left-hand side. Make sure you keep across all of the Formula E socials and stuff, and we'll get to the bottom of what happened to the DS Penske's, because they both finished with damage. Good to finish 11th. Benestrat huh? finished 15th. That's a good one. For some reason. It certainly was. Uh, Hughes finishing fifth when Will McLaren feel they should have finished second in that race. It's his first race as a rookie. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to give it to him. A top five leaving here. A huge amount learned. Porsche's last three podiums have come at this race, oh, which is uh, quite remarkable. Uh, Boemi and Cassidy both scoring points for Envision. De Costa ending up dropping behind Boemi. But now let's hear from the race winner, the new championship leader. He's with Nicky Shields. Jake Dennis. Sheer domination in today's race. I mean, seven and a half seconds ahead of Pascal Wehrlein. Just describe how it feels winning in front of this incredible crowd, 50,000 people supporting you, and more at home, of course, as well. Absolutely incredible. You know, the fans here have just been sensational. On that final lap, I could really hear them cheering, and to obviously win by that margin, start on the front row, and, uh, yeah, to obviously get a Porsche 1-2 is absolutely incredible. So... Big shout out to my team. Uh, such a physical race. These cars are so hard to drive physically. And obviously with the lower grip as well, it just makes everything so challenging. But even more rewarding when you, uh, when you win by 7.5 seconds. So it's time for some tequilas with the team. And uh, yeah, incredible race. I'm sure there'll be plenty of that. And um, just talk us through, because it feels like you and the car have really worked so well together all day. You've looked great on track today. Why has it all come together so well for you? Uh, just you know my team and my team and I just have such a good relationship together and we just work so well you know when it's up against us like it was in the qualifying in that final one we turned it around and made some small adjustments for the race and absolutely nailed it so big kudos to my guys I'm nothing without them and uh, yeah this is just a small repayment for them and uh, yeah hope to uh, more success because obviously Saudi's not far away exactly now all you've got to do is reproduce exactly the same performance in a couple of weeks I try my best Enjoy the tequila. Jake Dennis, today's winner at the Mexico e -Prix. Superb performance from Jake Dennis. Then. Taking the victory in dominant style. He got the lead here when Lucas Degrassi made a mistake on the exit of Turn 1. And from there on, he was never even under any pressure. Pulled away by about five seconds, had a safety car, pulled away again, and came across the line. Take the win. Let's get out of here for the second place, man. Well, Pascal Verlaine, it's not quite the win as last year, but 18 points is a cracking way to start the season. Yeah, great way to start the season. Um, pace was uh, awesome. Um, I mean, starting from P6 um, to end up in P2 was really, really good. So I'm very grateful for the car that my team gave me this weekend. and. Uh, yeah, I think um, the last couple of months we really put in some hard work, especially also the last couple of weeks. Um, 
after Valencia and uh, yeah I just want to thank everyone in in the team for for the hard work and um, yeah we have a clear goal this season and uh, that's the best way to start it and it looked like energy management was really good for you guys as well yeah definitely it seemed like uh, the pace in the race was really good even in qualifying um, all the Porsche cars were super strong so um, yeah we hope just that it's not a one-off. We keep working hard. You know, last year Mexico has also been our best race, so uh, we just need to make sure to keep working hard to understand the car really, really good and uh, then to make progress. And like I said, we want to fight for the championship and it's a good way to start. Absolutely, onwards and upwards. Thanks very much. Pascal Wehrlein. So great performance from Pascal Wehrlein. As he said, starting sick, and he made his way up the order, order dispatched Dan Tickton fairly swiftly. This was the moment he got ahead of Jake Hughes when Hughes activated his attack mode, got him into second place and then made this move on Lucas Degrassi into the chicane and that was ultimately second position once he got ahead of Hughes and Degrassi and a really, really strong drive. But interested to hear from uh, this man, third place finish for Lucas Degrassi. Lucas Grassi, would you call this the drive of your career? Might not be the win, but that was a phenomenal performance. Thank you very much. It was a very, very tough race. Of course, we are not in this race. We know that the Porsches are extremely fast. Remember last year that they won one and two and they disappeared. So it was impossible to hold uh, Jake and Pascal. Um, I was running low on energy, but I tried to defend as much as I could. And uh, in the end, the podium is like a win to us. We did only three, four days with this car. It's still so much potential to take it out. I'm very, I'm super happy. Excellent. Well, enjoy the celebrations, and we can't wait to see what you can do in Saudi. Thanks very much. A lot of celebrations for Lucas Degrassi in the past in Mexico. Usually ends up with his top off, so we'll see what happens uh, today. Ah, oh, it's only if he wins. Yeah, th yeah, you can't be taking your top off for third place, I guess. Uh, Jake's top will be off. Put it on, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> anyway, let's not get bogged down in that. Let's look at Degrassi's highlights of his race, shall we? Uh, started from pole position, Lucas Degrassi got away well, held the lead, had two safety car restarts to contend with, but that little error meant that Jake, you, uh, that uh, Jake Dennis got past. I think realistically. With the pace that Dennis had today, even if Degrassi hadn't made that error, Dennis was going to get him. And uh, then Berline followed through as well. He did put on a, a defending masterclass, so that would have been cool to see. Yeah, absolutely epic. Absolutely epic stuff from, from Lucas Degrassi. And now they're on the buggies and on their way to the podium. And uh, finally, Dennis gets to put his feet up and we'll be hearing from the drivers in the driver's room a little bit later on after the podium or you'll be able to see it on social media It'd be great to see some replays of that that mid-pack fight yeah did that you enjoy the driver's room yeah 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 do you have any arguments in there i can't remember i didn't make any friends <laughs> So there you can see De Costa straight in with the with the chat with Lotter up. Don't know what happened with Van Dorn, but fascinating stuff. Right, we'll be back with the podium in a couple of moments' time. Let's first go down to Vernon. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Me and Karun here, uh, right in front of the podium. The atmosphere is building for the trophy presentation. But Karun, let's just tick a few boxes. All in all, I think a very successful first race for this Gen 3 car. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we had a few reliability issues we saw, but to be expected in a, in a first race of a new generation. Uh, the overriding thing, really, as you can see the crowd starting to cheer here, uh, was Jake Dennis's unbelievably dominant performance. I know Lucas highlighted last year, one, two for Porsche, and you know, this is a particularly strong track for them, but this was on a different level. It was an amazing drive, amazing defending uh, from Lucas Degrassi. I mean, we talked about him at the top of the show. He's one of those wily old veterans that have been in Formula E from the very, very start. And he showed 
his value, he proved his worth today by holding on to that third position. Yeah, uh, at one point he was 3% down on energy, and that's basically a lap. The fact that he recovered that and got himself into that position to hold JQs off was, uh, was a phenomenal performance. And actually that showed the experience difference between Jake as a rookie and Lucas as someone who's done every one of these races. And uh, I'm sure that Jake is going to go off and celebrate, but that Andretti team, it must boost their confidence. They're a good team. Uh, they have been a good team with the Gen 2 car, but no, it must really lift their spirits knowing that they've got a decent car with Gen 3. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see what happens when we get to the next couple of races, whether Mexico was a one-off, but for now, I think it looks like the podium is about to kick off. All right, brilliant. We'll have more from the podium a little bit later on. The atmosphere is building, and it's truly electric. <laughs> Here in Mexico City after Jake Dennis takes another victory in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. That's his fourth win of his Formula E career, seventh podium, and he set the Tag Heuer fastest lap of the race with a 1 minute 14.195 on his way to dominating that race. In fact, his fastest lap was over a tenth quicker than anyone else as well. Only one driver, I will say this, only one driver ever in the eight seasons of Formula E has won the championship after winning the first race. And that was Sebastian Buemi in season two. So we'll wait and see what the rest of the season has to offer. That's uh, J.F. Thorman, the vice president of the Avalanche Andretti team. Based in Indianapolis, one of the races that the top of uh, Andretti make it to. Yeah. This one, and obviously Portland, we expect to see him at um, here to be presented the trophy for manufacturers win. He's waiting for the presentations to begin. And uh, Degrassi, this is his 40th Formula E podium. Okay. Around number 40 for uh, Lucas Degrassi. So impressive. And it doesn't matter where he qualifies, he always finds his way yeah. up at the front. And we saw that race crap today from him. And also, that's 40 in 101. So that's 40%, basically, of, uh, of races. Two in five races, Degrassi's on the podium. It's a lot of hardware. Yeah. He's got to have a... a Massive showcase. Yeah, <laughs> he must do. Okay, maybe he gets rid of some. I don't oh. know. Maybe some. I know. I get rid of. I get rid of a couple. Did you? Yeah. Back to the team. Oh, back to. Oh, that's. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice. Move. Might ask for him later. <laughs> JF, as uh, we've said, has been on many podiums in his in his time. Michael Andretti's right-hand man, essentially. And I think that was uh, Dennis asking where Lotterer finished, and fourth was the answer. So probably leading the team's championship now, Avalanche Andretti as well. Yeah, and the, the works Porsche team in second. Yeah. But it's still early. Yeah, absolutely. The next race is coming up in Diria in uh, two weeks' time. It's a double header in Diria, and the races are on Friday and Saturday nights. Night races in Diria. And, uh, the weekends over there are Friday and Saturday, so uh, that's where you can listen and join us. A completely different circuit, yeah, to this one. Very flowing, low grip, dusty. Did you say it was your favorite track? I would say so. Yeah. So here comes JF Thorman, the uh, president of Andretti Autosport. I always forget JF's title, to be perfectly honest with you, but here he comes now. Just really important man at Andretti. He's the boss of many positions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he makes his way up onto the podium. Great to see the amount of fans. We've had 44,000 fans here this weekend. And they've all made their way to the podium to watch the celebrations unfold as Jeff makes his way up onto the podium now. Michael watching at home, I'm sure he's delighted. Yeah, no doubt. To see these images. 
and that is uh, Andretti's ninth win in the Formula E World Championship. Their 22nd podium. Jake, at this point, ought to be the winningest. Of their drivers? Yeah. Well, he's won four of nine, hasn't he? So, yeah, I think the Costa won maybe one. Uh, who else? There'll be some random people in there, because in the early days, they had about a million drivers, Andretti. Sims, friends. Yes. Uh, I don't think I don't think uh, France won for his first win came with Envision. In third place, anyway, from third place Racing is the Mahindra Lula Racing Dirazi. driver. First race for Mahindra. And it's a third pole position and a third place for Lucas de Grassi. Which will tie him second in the championship with Pascal Verlein with those three points for pole. Verlein will be ahead on uh, Race finish position, count back. Degrassi on the podium again in Mexico. He knows how to make an entrance to the podium. Yeah. He's done it a couple times. Absolutely. Champagne will be sprayed here. Tequila will be drank. Degrassi has he stood on the podium four times now in Mexico. Three times here, although he then later got disqualified, and once in Puebla. Pascal Verlein, another Mexico City specialist. A couple, two pole positions here in the past, and now a second place finish as he climbs up onto the podium. Jake speaking about how difficult these cars are to drive. Maybe, yeah. maybe not heavy in a way, but he's constantly, these drivers are constantly catching the car on, on throttle. Um, a lot of wheel movement, as we've seen from the onboards. And now here he comes, fourth Formula E win. Championship leader, Jake Dennis. High fives with the fans, launches into his team. They're not gonna let him get up there. Absolutely not. All the mechanics down there at the front, engineers in there as well. And basically everyone from the Andretti squad is there. Dennis wins again. It's the top step of the podium. El himno nacional del piloto ganador. Dominant and drive the national for Jake Dennis. The and now it's time for the Great national Great anthem. And now the national anthem. Jake Dennis on the top step. And now the national anthem of Avalanche Andretti.
So Avalanche Andretti, and for Andretti, that is their second biggest ever points haul from a Formula E race. Do you know what their highest was, Oliver? Congratulations to all of our winners. The highest ever Andretti points haul before this, before this, and including this. Was I involved? Yes, sir. Uh, there had to have been London. Yeah, yeah. London last year because uh, Dennis got pole and the win, and you finished fourth. So that was still Andretti's highest ever points haul. There you go. Uh, Thanks for that. You're welcome. Uh, there is Jorge Abed, the president of the Andrea Mexico Thorman. ASN, presenting the trophy to J.F. Thorman. To present the trophy to the third place driver, Lucas Di Grassi. Lucas Di Grassi receives his trophy from Andrea Cuomo, the head of Hispanic America in Mexico for the Julius Baer Bank. Another podium for De Grassi, his 40th in 101 races. Next, what a strike Lama, ratio. Martin Bierod, the president of electrification and now Morten Bierod, the president of electrification for ABB, will hand the second place trophy to Pascal Verlein. Another podium for Pascal and Porsche in Mexico. And now, Yongo Park, the chief marketing officer of Hancock Tires, will be handing out the trophy to Jake Dennis, the race winner. Dennis wins and takes the lead of the championship. First time he's won the opening race of the Formula E season. And the uh, Moet will be presented to Jake Dennis by our Formula E superfan, Helen Mendez. And now we celebrate. Jake Dennis wins. The champagne is sprayed on the podium. There'll be plenty more of that consumed in the evening. But what a start to the season for Jake Dennis and Avalanche Andretti. A superb opening race of the season for them. A really entertaining opening race of the season for Formula E. Goodness me, did it crescendo at the end. Roger Griffiths delighted. Covered in confetti. He's loving it. Andretti win in Mexico. Yeah. Great footage there, Karun, of Roger Griffiths, the man in charge of the Andretti team. Absolute classic, because these guys have put in a lot of hard work, lots of days, lots of nights, with the new technology of the Gen 3 car. It's paid off for them. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Roger on the grid along with Jim Wright. You know, they're, they're a privateer team. You know, they're a Porsche customer team who've come out here, out-qualified the works Porsche cars with both of theirs, and comprehensively outraced them in the race. I mean, Pascal did a great job coming up from sixth to second. Uh, and I suppose some of the gaps were created by Degrassi. But Jake Dennis, you know, don't forget, he had that safety car, which compromised the four second lead. He was uh, on a different planet. I'm really interested to see if they can carry this on to the, uh, to the, to the other circuits. Yeah, we go again in Diria on the 27th of January. The data, I know I keep talking about the data, but it's pivotal and it's key to Formula E. There's a lot of number crunching to be done for a lot of teams who we thought would do better today. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is the, the challenge is the range of circuits that they go to, right? You know, we've got what's a permanent facility here. We're coming up to a, a street circuit everyone knows very well, and then a street circuit that's completely new to everyone. So, uh, yeah, some big challenges and a lot of long nights ahead for the engineers. And we should congratulate Jake Dennis, our driver of the day. Stunning performance. Absolutely awesome. I mean, he didn't think that they would put that car at the top of the podium, but they have. So congratulations to him and Andretti, and we'll see you next time in Saudi Arabia on the 27th. Brand new car, brand new season. And we go green in Mexico City.